Hi, Banggood just sent me another battery internal resistance tester. This one is the Finerci HRM-10. I am actually quite eager to test it out. As if you recall, I had tested a two-top IR502 battery internal resistance tester a month or two ago, and since that one was the only battery tester I had at the time, I wasn't able to verify any of the measurements. Well, not anymore. With this HRM-10, I should be able to verify some of the measurements we made earlier with that IR502. As I explained in my IR502 review video, these battery testers typically use AC conductance method to measure the battery internal resistance. This method works by applying a low amplitude AC signal with a frequency of roughly 1 kHz across the battery terminals, and then measure the impedance accordingly. This method is very similar to how LCR meters measure capacitor's equivalent series resistance, or ESR, except a typical LCR meter can't measure components with significant DC bias. Doing so may damage the meter. Now, this is obviously not going to be an issue with a dedicated battery tester. And speaking of voltage, the HRM10 can measure voltages up to 100 volts. The IR502, on the other hand, can measure up to 120 volts. To me, I can't think of a common scenario where you would need to measure such a high battery voltage, so 100 volts maximum is actually plenty. The AC conductance method models the internal resistance of a battery as complex impedance, and it can include resistance, capacitance, and inductance. Alternatively, you can always use the DC method to measure the internal resistance. All you need to do is by measuring the difference of the terminal voltage readings under two different currents. And the internal resistance can be calculated as delta V over delta I. But the measured DC resistance is not going to be the exact same value as the resistance measured using the AC conductance method. So that's why I needed another battery tester to verify the results I got from the IR502. And here is the product manual. If you look at the specifications, you'll see that the voltage range specified here is 100 volts in either polarity, as I mentioned earlier. And the resistance measurement range is up to 200 ohms. The IR502, on the other hand, can measure up to 500 ohms. But for all intents and purposes, 200 ohms is more than sufficient for your typical battery internal resistance measurements. I would be very worried if any of my battery's internal resistance is over a few ohms, let alone 100 ohms. Of course, unless it's a coin cell or a 9 volt battery. Anyway, these are just some of the differences I can spot on paper. The HRM10 also uses these Kelvin clips, and you can see that the connector is not standard. It's a 4-pin connector. This is different than the connector used on the IR502. That one uses a DB9 connector, as you can see here. To be honest, I'm not a big fan of either type of these connectors, but the connector used on the HRM10, I suppose, is more elegant, as it's more compact. And if you take a closer look, you will see that these are properly wired Kelvin clips, there are actually two wires. One is soldered on this side. The other one is, you can see here, through this wire here, is soldered on the other side. So this ensures that the two clips are independently connected, which is the proper wiring for Kelvin sensing. All right, let me actually hook up the probes, and we'll power it on and see how easy it is to use it. See, this is keyed. I actually don't mind this connector at all. As you can see, it secures very nicely, and also it is compact, as I mentioned. Of course, we still have this screen protector. Let me remove it. All right, hopefully there's not too much glare from this angle. Let's power it on. And we power it on immediately. Let me also actually power on the IR502 so we can do a side-by-side -side comparison here. And you can see the IR502, the display is a lot larger compared to the Fenersi here, but the Fenersi display is fairly crisp, so no issues at all. And just by looking at it, I can already see some differences here. For example, if you look at the voltage resolution, on the Fenersi is 100 microvolts, whereas on the IR502 is 10 millivolts. So the voltage resolution, by what I can see here, is 100 times better on the Fenersi. Of course, we'll have to see if that is actually the case. So let me actually do a few tests. This time we'll be measuring using both the HRM10 and also the IR502, so we can see side-by-side -side comparison. Oh, before I forget, let's actually take a look at the output waveform from the HRM10. I think it did mention from the specifications that it was AC. Let's see here. 
Yep, it says it's AC 1 kilohertz. So let's verify that. So here's the output waveform from the HRM10. And you can see it's not quite sinusoidal, but it's close. And we have roughly a 2 volt signal. It's 1.92 peak to peak. And the frequency is 986 hertz. So it's close to 1 kilohertz. Now, this does look slightly different from the waveform on the IR502. So let me just show you that. So let me remove this. And here's IR502. You can see. So this one is a little bit more sinusoidal, but it also has this kind of interval. You can see every few seconds we have this kind of glitch. But the signal is also very close to 1 kilohertz, and also the magnitude is a little bit higher. This one comes in at almost 5.6 volts peak to peak. Anyway, by default, it boots into this automatic mode. You can see the voltage and resistance measurements are both automatic. But you do have the ability to change them to manual mode if you want. For example, right now, if I press this, you can see that we can see the voltage measurement changes to 1 volt auto, 110 watt. And of course, if you want to change the resistance range, you can press it, think, down button, yep. Yeah. Then you can kind of use this button to change it manually. So that's quite useful. But I think by default, the automatic ranging is already pretty good as we have seen from using the IR502. So I'll leave those as default for now. Now let's do some comparative measurements with both of these meters on a few batteries. Of course, the clips are Kelvin clips. So technically speaking, you should ensure that two sides of the clips do not touch each other. But not all batteries, especially the commonly used ones, allow these clips to be clipped on easily. Since we're doing some comparison between these two meters, I think this time I need to make sure I separate these clips so that we can get some more meaningful measurement results. To do that, I found some spacers here so you can see if I slide these in. Now these two sides are separated. So I can ensure that I'm indeed using four wire sensing here. Okay, so that's how I'm going to measure. And when I'm changing to this meter, I'm going to obviously put these spacers on the other set of the Kelvin clips. All right, let's start with this C cell. Now, to make sure that we do not touch the terminals, because this is Kelvin sensing, I'm actually using spacer on the negative side. On the top side, I think I can clip onto the top like this. Of course, I have to hold it. So it's a little bit of, uh, difficult to do this measurement, but let me do that. So on the furnace, you can see it stabilizes roughly at 570 milliohms. And let's try the same thing on the IR502. Again, we're going to clip on the top here. And we're going to try to press the bottom. And you can see we're getting roughly 580. So that's very comparable. Now, to make my life easier, let's measure a 9 volt, as we can clip onto both ends. So let's do that. Let's first use for Nursi. And you can see we're measuring roughly 900 milliohms with a terminal voltage of 9.28 volts. And now let's try that on the IR502. And you can see we're measuring almost exactly the same internal resistance. So that's actually very consistent. Of course, the voltage reading is roughly the same too, but this one has one less digit. Now, I do want to measure one of these lithium ion cells, but the challenge is going to be that actually these are pretty difficult to measure, as you can see that neither side I can clip onto. I could use a spacer, but I tried earlier. It's just very awkward. I can't really hold the battery still. So let me actually just do it without. Of course, the reading will be slightly off because we're technically not using Kelvin sensing here, but let's give it a try. We'll try to make the contact as big as possible here. So let's see. Twenty seven milliohms for this battery. And let's try the other one. You 
you can see it's 24.7, 24.7 milliohms. So they're still pretty close. So after we have done a few tests, you can see that the results from these meters are actually quite comparable. So that's definitely a good thing. Now I wanted to revisit a test I did with IR502 by measuring this 100 ohm precision resistor. And this one has a tolerance of 0.1%. If you remember when we did a measurement with the IR502, the result was a little bit off. Actually, let me show you here. So let me measure it. You can see the result should be exactly 100 ohm, but you can see we have quite a bit of difference here. So it's showing 101.4. So that's quite a bit off from the 100 ohm nominal value. So let's do the same test with the HRM10. And we're measuring exactly 100 ohms. You can see here, even the 0.08 is well within the 0.1% tolerance. So this actually is able to measure the precision resistor here with no problem. So that's very good. The HRM10 has a display resolution of 100 microvolts or 0.1 millivolts. Let's actually verify whether or not it's just a display thing or it actually supports that resolution. For that, I'm going to use my MV216A voltage standard. And right now you can see it's outputting a 1 volt signal. And we can see that it's exactly 1 volt. So let me change it to 2 volts. 3, 4, no problem. 5, you can see that indeed is measuring the voltage here. So now let me go down to 100 millivolts. Yeah, no problem. Let's try 10 millivolts. No problem. One, no problem. So now it's a moment of truth. Let's test the last digit here. So right now, of course, it's 0.0002 or three. So let's increment by one. Yeah, it's registering that. Let's do another one. Yep, you can see that we are indeed able to measure that last significant digit. That's actually excellent. So now we're at six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Because we had some offset, that's why you're seeing the last digit as three. So let's go back all the way to zero. You will see that. So in a pinch, you can actually use this meter as a pretty accurate voltmeter. Now, I don't remember if I ever used the IR502 to test voltage. Let's actually give it a try, shall we? Let's do that. So let's hook it up here. And negative. You can see that the voltage display on the IR502 is jumping around quite a bit, actually, even though the connection is pretty secure. You can see that it doesn't really matter. So let's increase the voltage. 2 volts. Yeah, it's definitely not as accurate as the HRM10. 1 volt. And also you notice the measurement speed is quite slow here. 2. Yeah, it took quite a while. 3. 4. Definitely not as accurate. Now it's 5 volts. It should be 5 volt exact, but it's jumping all over the place. And if I move it to the other meter, you can see that. Let's see here. This is a Finerci. And you can see it's measuring a very stable 4.999. So clearly, this meter is superior when measuring voltage compared to the IR502 here. And by the way, there are additional functionalities. You can access the menu by press and hold this button. And you can see we have the sorting mode. Basically, you can do pass and fail of your components. And let's come back here. You can have history. Let's see what that is. Oh, I know. So you can actually store the data into the onboard memory here. Of course, we didn't use that. And let's go back. And we can calibrate voltage calibrate resistance, change volume, so on and so forth. So you get the idea here. 
And when you log the data, data is actually saved into a CSV file, and you can later download to your computer. Being able to store measured data and being able to connect to a computer is definitely a plus for the HRM10, which the IR502 does not support. My original plan was to do a teardown, but I actually couldn't figure out how to open this up. And you can see here, we do have these four rubber feet. Originally, I thought there were screws hiding underneath, but I actually peeled these off, but there's no screws. And so if you flip this over, you will see that there's no obvious way for this to be open. So I actually am not sure. But anyway, I will try to figure that out, but I think that's all I want to do for this video. From today's video, I think the Finerci HRM10 is the clear winner here, although it does cost slightly more than IR502. But as far as doing battery internal resistance testing, either meter should do the trick. Now, the Finerci does seem to be a little bit more polished, and also it's faster. It also has higher voltage resolution. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you liked the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Your participation makes videos like this possible. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.